evening, everyone. What would you say this glass is? Would you call it half full or half empty? My mother would always say, you should always see the glass half full. And I would say, why? And she would go on and say, you should always be optimistic. Why are you so pessimistic all the time? And I would be, oh, mother, you call it pessimistic, I call it realistic. It's the same thing. No, but I mean, absolutely not. See, a pessimist's response to this question would be, yeah, it's half empty. Where the realist response would be, whether you want to call it half full or half empty, does it actually have any sort of real altering effect on the exact number of milliliters of water contained by this glass? <laughs> she would glare at me for a few seconds, then turn around, go about with whatever it was she was doing before she even got into this conversation with me, and then she would whisper on top of her tongue, and tip of her tongue, you've got an answer for everything. I should have sent you to do law or marketing. <laughs> I used to do that kind of games with her a lot as a kid, being an only child and everything. And um, yes, you might have guessed right by now, the toy my title refers to is words. Indeed, words are a very, very powerful thing, yet, oddly enough, they're just a means to describe concepts. For instance, what, is you, what do you see here? Fire, right? And ice? Nice. Excellent. Now, let's pretend that all of you in this room were somehow isolated by the beginning of your time on this earth, and you were taught that this is fire and this is ice. Now, if I were to stand in here today and tell you, no, no, you actually have it all in reverse. This is fire and this is ice. You'd be a crazy person. <laughs> Indeed, the only reason why fire is used for this, and it's basically a four-letter word, an anagram of using four letters of a standardized alphabet, and the only reason why it's used to describe this is because we said so. <laughs> Basically, we could call this uh, ice or wind or Joanna or Christian <laughs> or anything else or cat, and it would be just as fine as long as we have all agreed upon doing so. This was a very simple example of how words are related to concepts, and I'm saying I'm calling this a simple example because these were concepts that are fairly simple. They can be perceived by just using our senses. And this, this word game, though, becomes a bit more complex when the concepts begin to be a bit more abstract and a bit more complex themselves. For instance, I had a very, very interesting conversation the other day with a good friend of mine about uh, whether the events in one's life are triggered by pure chance or fate. I'm not a fatalistic person, I must admit, so I was the one in favor of chance. He started off by saying, if someone believes in fate, that makes them feel safer. And I said, well, ah, that would only be true if a person believes that their fate is good. For instance, if I were to right now implant into my own brain by force that my fate is to walk outside of this building and be hit by a flying piano <laughs> falling from the sky, then believing in fate wouldn't really make me feel too safe. On the contrary, I'd say. He went on saying, no, no, I, I meant safe in the sense that if you believe that things are supposed to happen in a way and they're gonna happen that way, then you feel safer and calmer and you feel less anticipation of what's gonna happen. Actually, it's a bit irrelevant. Whether you want to call it chance or fate or whatever you want to call this thing that triggers events in your life, the, fa the sole fact that you don't know what's coming is the thing that triggers your curiosity, especially if you are a curious soul. Indeed, the only difference between chance and fate is that notion of some preconceived design uh, made by uh, some preconceived schema, whether you want to call it, designed by some, excuse me, some higher power, where chance is basically one per n factorial, where n factorial is the number of parameters that impact one's life, and that basically tends to infinite, therefore that probability tends to zero. Yet, 
improbable, but not impossible. Uh, anyhow, um, after all, if you, if you want my personal opinion, why would you want to feel safe anyway? It is a false sense of security what, what faith brings to a person, I, I personally believe. And why would you want to feel safe? It's boring. <laughs> but let's, let's backtrack a little bit to what my mother had said at her last quote. I should have sent you to do law or marketing. Fundamental rule of law. It doesn't matter if it's true or false. What, what matters is if you have strong arguments and if you have a solid way of presenting them. Fundamental rule of marketing. You have to believe the lie a little bit in order to sell it. <laughs> For instance, I can stand in front of you today and firmly state that I do believe that flying elephants might exist. Now, before you call me insane, <laughs> hear me out. If we could conduct a, um, a survey and have all six billion people in this world participate and ask them whether they have seen a flying elephant, probably, <laughs> if not all of them, 99.9% .9 including myself would say, no, I haven't seen a flying elephant. However, taking into account that not one person in this earth have set foot on every inch of this planet, and in fact, no one has traveled in all planets of this universe, <laughs> that, that the survey would constitute my statement. Rather improbable still, but not impossible. In addition to that, if we take into account that my hypothesis hypotheses, pardon me, included the word might, then I can confidently say that the hypothesis is very much valid and on top of it with a probability of 100%. <laughs> Finally, I, I, I must say I'm not a language fan. I never was. <laughs> I'm an engineer and specifically a software engineer. I chose programming languages on top as, as opposed to natural languages. And the reason for that is because I really love math. I think you might have probably realized this from the entire speech. Uh, but if I would like you to take one thing into account and think about it a little bit is you should learn your language and the vastness of expression that words can, can give you. It can bring so much excitement to be able to, to do that mind-twisting little game and, and it'll take you from winning little silly debates with friends up to winning real battles at your work, at your life. It can be a great ally throughout your entire life. And Always keep in mind that one word might make a big difference. Thank you.